So what's up guys, I'm Black Ops Amazing, welcome back to another video on the channel where today we are going to be taking a look at 10 real life historical events within Call of Duty Zombies. In the earlier days of COD Zombies, World at War, Black Ops 1, a bit of BO2, some of the storyline was taken from real life events or theories, conspiracies. And so if you're into that kind of stuff like I am, I love when developers take real life events and then implement them into video games. Well, Call of Duty has plenty of that and so I've compiled 10 of the most interesting ones in my opinion, and we're going to talk about them in today's video. And the first one is the Tunguska event. All the way back in World of War Shinonuma when Zombies was first starting off 2009, in this map you will find an orange meteorite. Now at the time nobody would have known what this was supposed to be or what it was supposed to represent if we didn't find in one of the shacks this writing on the wall saying Tunguska. The Tunguska event was an approximate 12 megaton explosion that occurred near the Tunguska River in Russia in 1908 and it was particularly famous compared to other meteor events because of the impact it left. It flattened an estimated 80 million trees and eyewitnesses suggested that at least three people may have died in the event. The explosion is generally attributed to a meteor airburst, which is when an asteroid explodes. So although the Tunguska incident is classified as an impact event, the object is thought to have exploded at an altitude of 5 to 10 kilometers rather than hitting the earth's surface and leaving the impact crater as you would usually get. In this case there was no impact crater just a massive hole that was left where the explosion flattened trees. But the Tunguska event is the largest impact event on earth in recorded history. Much larger ones have occurred obviously but during prehistoric times. And so where this links back to COD Zombies is as I was saying in Shinonuma we find this meteorite next to writing that said Tunguska so we could link the two together. The Tunguska event, a meteorite in Shinonuma, was this a part of the Tunguska asteroid that exploded? In Zombies Law, we know that this is a piece of element 115. It is a meteor that has come from space, containing the element, and the Tunguska event does also relate to another Zombies map, Call of the Dead, which actually takes place near the Tunguska River in Siberia. But that's for another video. The next real-life Call of Duty Zombies event in quotation marks is about the Skull of Nansapwa. In Zetsubenoshima, one of the wonder weapons or specialist weapons is called the Skull of Nansapwa. It's hidden on the map in an altar that you can access by cleansing four different skulls. These are called the Trials of the Ancients. When you obtain the wonder weapon, it grants you two different attacks, Vaporize and Mesmerize. The Vaporize ability raises zombies into the air before obliterating them, causing them to emit a bright light. And the Mesmerize attack makes zombies docile. This also works on spiders and thrashers as well. And that ability is also used to reveal hidden objects. But Nansapwa has a deeper meaning. We know that Zetsubo no Shima takes place on the island of Pompeii, and on that island, in real life, resided a semi-mythical hero warrior called Itzo Kalikalel. I've I've probably said that totally wrong. But anyway, according to most versions of Isaac Kalikal's legendary birth, his father is the thunder god Nansapwa. Nansapwa had committed adultery with the wife of the Saudali Lord, and in anger, the Saudali Lord set out to capture Nansapwa. Some versions include that the ruler had also incensed other gods to the Pompeian pantheon, and insulted a high priest who prophesied the Saldalia's downfall. But anyway, the thunder god Nansapwa, offended by the Saldalia Lord, ended up leaving Pompeii. Apart from that, there's not actually that much information on Nansapwa, and to be honest, just from my point of view, his story is not that interesting. But that is where the real-life inspiration from the Nansapwa wonder weapon does come from. There is also a story that Troyok tell, that we learn in-game through translation of the Keeper runes. It tells the story of a keeper who arrived on Pompeii protecting the island and its people and at some point an evil rose, or arrived on the island, forcing the keeper to sacrifice himself, using the skull to protect the island. His skull would then be sealed away. And if you look at the skull it very much resembles a keeper's head, but in real life or real life inspiration, mythology, it is the head of the thunder god. Next up, on the map, the giant, I don't believe this could be found in its original version, Darice. Underground in one of these zombie spawns, you could find a train and besides it gold now you might be thinking okay how is this interesting it's just a train underground but have you heard of the nazi gold train it is an urban legend about a train that was laden with gold and treasure that was hidden by the nazis in southwest poland during the last days of world war ii the tale claims that the train was full of valuables including artwork and was concealed in a sealed up rail tunnel or mine and where does our zombies map the giant take place lower silesia near Breslau, germany which would have been Poland. Despite numerous searches since 1945, including the Polish army during the Cold War, no evidence of the train, its tracks or treasures have ever been found, but Troyok went off this urban legend and included it in the game. This train was supposed to have been buried by the Nazis in southwest Poland during the last days of World War II, and what do we find in the giant 
near Breslau, Poland, buried underground in a sealed up rail tunnel or mine, a gold train. What was the Resaw the Giant a Nazi facility, since Group 935 collaborated with the Nazis? And what do we see here? A Nazi gold train. Now, whether or not it actually existed is a totally different story. I would go with probably not. There is a lot of myth and legend like this from the Nazi side, but that doesn't make it any less interesting. And you can still see in real life the unfinished tunnels of Project Rees in the Owl Mountains in Lower Silesia. The Nazi gold train left Breslauer, but never arrived at another station further on down the line. The train was suspected to have entered an abandoned coal mine, which was part of the unfinished top secret Nazi construction project that was called Project Rees in the same location as De Rees or the Giant. Next, in the Pentagon on the map 5 or classified, you will find on the lower level in the laboratory pigs. Some or most dead, one of them hanging alive that you can kill if you're that type of person. We've all done it, let's not lie. We've all knifed this pig. Like I said, you could see these on the original map 5, but it wasn't until the most recent version, Classified, where we found out what the use of these pigs were. There's a blueprint that shows us that the Americans used pig DNA to create the Nova 6 crawlers. That is why these pigs are in the Pentagon, and even then pigs are used in a lot of experiments, so there were many guesses as to what experiments they were being used for, but we knew that was their purpose. However, is there any specific real-life inspiration here? Have pigs IRL actually been used to create zombies? Well, all the way back in 2009, shortly before 5 released, there was an article that came out that you can find on multiple different websites, this is on Wired that I'm sourcing, that was titled Pentagon, Zombie Pigs First, then hibernating soldiers. Around half of US troop facilities are caused by blood loss from battlefield injuries. Now, with another 30,000 troops deploying in Afghanistan, remember this was from 2009, the Pentagon is pushing for medical advances that could save more lives during combat. The Defense Department's latest research idea, stop bleeding injuries by turning pigs into the semi-undead. If it works out, we humans could be the next ones to be zombified. Basically, the military's mad science arm DARPA was awarded 9.9 million to develop a treatment that can extend a golden period when injured warfighters have the best chance of coming back from massive blood loss. The Institute's research was based on previous DARPA-funded efforts. One project hypothesized that humans could one day mimic the hibernation abilities of squirrels, who emerge from winter months no worse for wear, using a pancreatic enzyme that we have in common with the critters. And the other research effort used worms and rats to test how hydrogen sulfide could block the body's ability to use oxygen, creating a kind of suspended animation where the heart stops beating and wounds don't bleed. And so of course the next logical step, try the same thing on pigs. They've got a similar cardiovascular system to humans, and so they thought they could accurately predict human results from pig trials. Using these pigs, the doctors were testing various compounds, some containing hydrogen sulfide, to find one that could safely keep the animals as close to death as possible. So they're trying to find this zombie vaccine that could be used on the battlefield for human application. One of the doctors predicted that each soldier will carry a syringe into combat zones or remote areas. Medical teams would be equipped with several of them, and a single injection would minimise metabolic needs, deanimating injured troops by shutting down their brain and heart function, and then once treatment could be carried out, they would be reanimated and hopefully as good as new. Now I'm guessing nothing ever came of that, but pigs being used as test subjects to find this zombie cocktail that could be used to shut down brain and heart function to stop bleeding and then reanimate people, kind of like zombies. Considering this came out in 2009 and 5 didn't release until 2010, a whole year later, I think it's very possible that this article or talks and ideas like this could have inspired Troyok's reasoning for putting pigs in the pentagon. Then again, they're also just a common animal for experiments anyway, but you never know. Sticking on the subject of animals, one of the more annoying bosses which we can find in Ascension are the space monkeys. In Call of Duty Zombies Lord, these were a part of the rocket research program in which the Ascension group under the Soviet Union was sending monkeys into outer space. They then become exposed to element 115, and when we are there playing as Richtof and Taki and Nikolai and Dempsey, they come crashing back down to Earth on their lunar landers and start attacking us. But as a part of their research, the Ascension group blasted these monkeys into the atmosphere. However, monkeys and apes in space isn't just a video game thing. Before humans went into space in the 1960s, several other animals were launched there first, including other primates. And this was to test the biological effects of spaceflight. Was it safe for humans? The Soviet Union launched monkeys into space between 1983 and 1996. The US also launched flights containing primates. Overall, 32 non-human primates flew in the space program. None flew more than once. 
But monkeys aren't the only space animal that we see in Call of Duty Zombies. We also have on the map Moon, a space dog. This can only be found on the Zombies Chronicles version. Compared to the monkeys in Ascension where there is a storyline behind them, there isn't one for this space dog. We can see he's got the Troyok logo on his uniform. In real life, there was a pretty famous Soviet space dog called Laika who was one of the first animals in space and the first to orbit the Earth. Unfortunately, when they sent this dog up there, they never expected it to survive, and she didn't. She overheated hours into the flight on the craft's fourth orbit. So perhaps this is why Troyok got the inspiration from for the dog we find on Moon, although I very much doubt it. They're also totally different dogs. The one we see is a beagle. This one isn't. The one we see is on the Moon. Again, this one isn't. But the space monkeys in Ascension definitely takes real life inspiration from all of those monkeys that were, well, sacrificed. In Call of Duty Zombies, we have loads of different wonder weapons from the ray gun to the winter's howl, the staffs, the bows to the wonder waffer DG2. And well, the wonder waffer kind of spells out where the inspiration for wonder weapons and zombies came from because wonder waffers, which in German means wonder weapons were real. And it was a term that was assigned during World War II by Nazi Germany's propaganda ministry. Nazi Germany created many different wonder weapons from the V1 flying bomb to the V2 missile. As the war situation worsened for Germany from 1942, claims about the development of revolutionary new weapons which would turn the tide of the war became an increasingly prominent part of their propaganda. Some were real and others weren't. They had wonder weapons ranging from aircraft carriers to battleships to U-boats, armored vehicles, gliders, bombs, explosives, missiles, Orbital weapons such as the Sun Gun, which was supposed to be a parabolic mirror in orbit designed to focus sunlight onto specific locations on the Earth's surface. A lot of these obviously didn't exist, but the idea of wonder weapons definitely did. And all of these magical weird weapons that we have in zombies are wonder weapons. One of the very first ones that we got, the Wonder Waffer DG2, was a German wonder weapon created by Dr. Edward Richthofen. And it goes even further than that because another one of the purported wonder weapons was called Die Glock, meaning the bell. This device was associated with anti-gravity and energy. It's claimed that Die Glock was a glowing rotating contraption, rumored to have some kind of anti-gravitational effect, be it a time machine or part of an SS anti-gravity program for a flying saucer. But if you look at all of the concepts and drawings out there for Die Glock or the bell, it looks very much like teleporters within Call of Duty Zombies, more specifically the early versions that we saw in Doris. Wonder Waffers don't only refer to weapons, but any kind of miracle device that Nazi Germany came up with, whether it be in real life or just imagined. So linking the two together, what Die Glock was rumoured to do, be some kind of anti-gravity device or a time machine, and you compare that to how our teleporters and zombies look and work, yeah, there's no doubt in my mind that inspiration was taken here. I'd say with this one though, unlike a lot of the others, there's probably no truth to it, it's more than likely a hoax. Arguably one of the biggest and most obvious events that Troyok took inspiration from was the Alcatraz escape attempt. In our Zombies map Mob of the Dead, we have four characters, the Weasel, Sal, Billy and Finn, who attempt to escape Alcatraz prison. They plan on doing this by killing the prison guard, building a makeshift aircraft on the roof and then flying away. Now in the zombie storyline that plan never came to be, the four roommates that planned to do it last minute realised that it was stupid, it was never going to work, and so ended up squabbling between each other before one of the inmates was killed, leading to them all being sent into purgatory in a never ending cycle. But the part where four inmates plan to escape the prison, in this case an aircraft, takes inspiration from the real life 1962 Alcatraz escape attempt, which involved Frank Maurice, John and Clarence Anglin, and Alan West. I'm sure most of you will know this story, there are plenty of documentaries on it, but quickly, late on the 9th of June 11th and early morning of June 12th, Clarence and John Anglin, along with Frank Marius, escaped the prison. The three men did this by tucking paper mache heads resembling their own likeness into their beds. They then broke out of the main prison building via ventilation ducts and unused utility corridors, and departed the island aboard an improvised inflatable raft. And if you're wondering what happened to the fourth conspirator, Alan West, well, his escape attempt failed and he remained on the island, but the other three managed to escape. As for their fates, we don't know. Most people presume they died whilst trying to reach shore. Some people say they managed to escape successfully and are still alive. In 1979, the FBI officially concluded on the basis of circumstantial evidence and expert opinions that the men drowned, but who knows for sure. However, you can see the similarities between their story and the story of are Mob of the Dead characters. The main points being four people attempting to escape the prison, both on makeshift vehicles. In Mob of the Dead, via a makeshift aircraft, and in real life, an improvised inflatable raft. 
And in a way, the other similarity being, it was only three out of the four mobsters that really escaped. In real life, one of their escape attempts failed, and in mob, the weasel, well, he was kind of the odd one out because he was killed by the other mobsters. You may or may not have heard of Operation Paperclip. It was a secret United States intelligence program in which more than 1,600 German scientists, engineers, and technicians were taken from the former Nazi Germany to the US government for employment after the end of World War II. And Operation Paperclip also took place in our zombie storyline. After the end of World War II and once Group 935 was disabandoned, both the Americans and the Russians came in and hired former Group 935 scientists. One of those being Dr. Schuster. Dr. Schuster used to work alongside Dr. Maxis and Dr. Richthofen. They helped to create weapons and technology for Nazi Germany. But once the war was over, the Americans hired Dr. Schuster, where he then helped them with their teleportation programs. But Schuster wasn't the only scientist. Richthofen also helped the Americans, or I should say actually he used them. But still, him and many other scientists who either worked for or alongside Nazi Germany were hired by the Americans as a part of Operation Paperclip and then helped them to develop their own technology, their own wonder weapons, teleporters, and even the undead, such as, as we discussed earlier, combining pig DNA to create the Nova 6 crawlers. And the final one I want to talk about in this video are the Keepers and how they take inspiration from the Vril. In 1871, there was a book that was published called Vril, The Power of the Coming Race. Its author is Edward Bullier Luton, but basically it's about a superior subterranean master race and the energy form called Vril, or as some might call them, the Vrilia. Anyway, these beings that call themselves the Vrilia have telepathic abilities as well as other abilities such as being able to transmit information, get rid of pain, put others to sleep. There have also been many other books that have been, I guess, inspired by this. For example, in a 1960s book, two French authors asserted that the Nazis had sought to build UFOs powered by the Vril. So once again, it kind of links back to the Nazi Wonder Waffle program. There is a lot of information out there about the Vril and a lot of conflicting information as well, depending on what you believe. But there is no doubt that the Vril Yard is what inspired the gatekeepers that we see in our zombie storyline, an ancient race. In fact, some of the first to ever exist. And this isn't just a theory that the two are linked. We've seen many different symbols throughout the years in Zombies. For example, on the Shangri-La loading screen, we have the Black Sun logo on the ground, which has a connection to the Vril, along with many others. So, there we go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, hopefully you've enjoyed the video today. If you have, drop a like rating. Make sure you are subscribed to stay up to date with the latest videos on the channel. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, goodbye.